So this question is asking us to find the least residue solutions of this cubic here. We've got x squared plus 3x squared minus 2x minus 8 is congruent with 0 modulus 21. Now, first thing we can see, the modulus here is a composite number. So we can break that up into prime factors, which we know is 3 and 7. So that's one thing we need to take into account. And the next thing we need to do is just to try and make some factors out of this cubic here. Now, x cubed plus 3x squared, so our coefficients are 1 and 3. And we've got a minus 2 and a minus 8. Well, these are split 4 to 1, and these are split 3 to 1. So we're not going to be able to do any grouping kind of method. So one way we can do is to try and plug in and try a couple of numbers and see where that goes. So minus 8... That's our constant here. So what we want to do is try and find factors of 8 that will try and give us a solution to this. And maybe one will appear. So let's just try that. So first of all, we'll start with plus or minus 1. So going straight into that, let's see if we can set that equal to 0 using those factors. So x squared plus 3x squared minus 2x minus 8 equals 0. And let's see if that gives us a correct solution. So quick plugging in the 1, we get 1 plus 3 times 1 squared gives us 3. Minus 2 times 1 gives us minus 2, minus 8. Straight away, we can see that does not equal 0. So minus 1, so plus 1 is out. Let's try the minus 1. So minus 1 cubed, that gives us minus 1. Minus 1 squared, that gives us 1 plus 3, uh, times 3, sorry, is plus 3. Minus 2 times minus 1, that gives us positive 2, and minus 8. Okay, so 3, 2 is 5, minus 8, minus 1 does not equal 0. So these factors are not going to work. So let's try the 2s. So plus or minus 2. So quick, let's just plug in a 2 here. So 2 cubed is 8. 3 times 2 squared, or well, 2 squared is 4, times 3 is 12. 2 twos are 4, so that's going to be minus 4, and minus 8. So minus 4, minus 8, minus 12, that cancels out with that one, but we've got an 8 here. So that doesn't equal 0. So the positive one doesn't work. So let's try the negative. Let's hope for some luck. So minus 2 cubed. That's going to give me minus 8. Then we're going to add 3 times x squared. So minus 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12. So that's that one. And then minus 2 times minus 2 gives us positive 4. And now we're looking good. So minus 8 plus minus 8 is minus 16. These two add up to 16. So now that is correct. So minus 2 is a solution. So therefore, one of our factors is going to give us x plus 2. OK, so now we've got that. Now we can use synthetic division to try and find a quadratic to go alongside this. That will be a factor of that. So let's try that next. OK, so as we've got minus 2 is a solution, what we do is we take minus 2 as our given. Then we set up a little box here, and then we want the coefficients of our cubic. So we've got x cubed, so that's a 1, 3x squared, so 3, minus 2x, so minus 2, and minus 8. And now what we want to do is, first of all, we bring down this 1, and then we do a system of calculations. So first of all, the minus 2 gets multiplied by this first one in the line. So that's minus 2 times 1, it's minus 2. And then we bring it up to the next coefficient here. Next stage is we're going to add them. So 3 plus minus 2, that's just going to give us 1 again. So again, the same calculation. Now we're on with this uh, constant here. So minus 2 times 1, that's minus 2. OK, so now, as we did before, add them together. 
minus 2 plus minus 2 is going to give me minus 4. And as we did before, we're in with this constant now. So minus 2 times minus 4 gives me 8. And now adding these together, I should get 0 to give me a solution to a quadratic here. So 8 minus 8 plus 8 gives me 0. So now I use these numbers now to give me a solution where I can form a quadratic. So this will be my A, this will be my B, and this will be my C. So I've now got x squared plus x minus 4, and then set that to equal 0. So then that will then form the next part of my solution here to try and factor this cubic. So I'm going to write this up here, and then we're going to try and solve for modulus 21 and see where we go. OK, so I've written up what we've got so far in the factorization. Now, I can't go any further with this. x squared plus x minus 4, I can't see any more factors. So I'm going to leave it at that and see what we can do with this. And now I'm ready to try and find congruences. So modulus 21, we knew was 3 times 7. So we need to do it in prime, prime modulus. So the first one I'm going to choose is modulus 3. So let's try and solve this modulus 3. So x plus 2 or x squared plus x minus 4, either of those should be congruent with 0 modulus 3. So let's try that. So x plus 2, let's start with that. So x plus 2 congruent with 0 mod 3. OK, so let's subtract 2 from both sides. x is congruent with minus 2 mod 3. So therefore, my x is congruent with 1 mod 3. OK, so that's my first building block to find my solution. So I've got here 1 plus 3n. So I'm going to write that over here. 1 plus 3n, and where n is an integer. OK, now what about this one? Let's try and set this one to be congruent with 0 mod 3. So x squared plus x minus 4 is congruent with 0 mod 3. OK, well, we could try and take the square of this. That might lead us to something. But while I've got an odd number in my coefficient here, I don't want a fraction in when I'm trying to do modulus calculations. So 1x is congruent to 4x modulus 3. So let's type that in there. So x squared plus 4x minus 4 is congruent with 0 mod 3. So now I can take the square. So x plus 2 squared. I've got to subtract a 4. And now I've got my minus 4 there. And that's congruent with 0 mod 3. OK, let's just try and simplify this off. So now I've got x plus 2 squared minus 4 and minus 4 gives me minus 8. So let's bring this over to the other side. It's going to be with 8 mod 3. OK, so now I'm looking for a term now that will be something I can take the square root of and get a, a whole number, modulus 3. So if I keep adding 3, I get 8, 11, 14, 17, 20. It seems like I'm going to go on forever. So I haven't got the time for that, to check that. So what we need is a little test to see if this actually does have any solutions, modulus 3. So what we'll do is we'll go back to our original quadratic factor. So x squared plus x minus 4. And we'll see if this has any solutions, mod 3 using the discriminant. So the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. So let's calculate what that is, and let's go from there. So b squared, so that's 1 squared, minus, and then we've got 4 times a and c. So 4 times minus 4 is minus 16, Minus and a minus, obviously it's a plus. So 1 plus 16, that gives me 17. So now what we're looking for, does 17, has that got a quadratic residue, modulus 3? 
So is 17 a quadratic residue modulus 3? Now, the quadratic residues modulus 3 we know are 0 and 1. So 0 and 1. So as we're talking in modulus terms, 17 is congruent to 2 mod 3. Well, 0 and 1 are our only quadratic residues, modulus 3. So therefore we conclude that this does have no solutions. So if you want to look at some information about quadratic residues, check the link below and you'll see some stuff about quadratic residues there. So therefore this has got no more solutions. So the only solution we can find here is this one here. So now we'll take this off the board and we'll try and find modulus 7 solutions. Okay, so now let's try and solve this now modulus 7. We've just done modulus 3. Let's see where we go to find some more building blocks to try and find our solutions. So as we did before, we'll start with this x plus 2, congruent with 0, mod 7. That must be the case when trying to find a congruence for this modulus 7. So let's try that. So x plus 2 is congruent with 0, mod 7. So x is congruent with minus 2, mod 7. And minus 2 is congruent with 5, mod 7. So let's write that in there. So there's another building block I've got. I've now got 5 plus 7 in. So that's another one. So I can put that one over here as another building block. And as before, let's try this tricky quadratic and let's see if this one's got any solutions mod 7. It didn't work mod 3, but let's see mod 7. x squared plus x minus 4 is congruent with 0 mod 7. Now the last time we took the square, it was in modulus 3 language. This time we need to do it in modulus 7. So this time we'll have to make this 1x congruent with something modulus 7, which will be 8x. So x squared plus 8x minus 4 is congruent with 0 mod 7. That will be the case for all values of x. Okay, so now we take the square of this one, x plus 4 squared. This time we need to subtract 16 and the minus 4, which we bring down, mod 7. Okay, so now we've got here minus 20. Let's bring that to the other side. And we've got x plus 4 squared is congruent with 20, mod 7. Now 20 mod 7, we know is congruent with 6 mod 7. So let's just, just put that in there. Let's not, not, not write that down, let's just scrub it out and change it. We know that's the case. So we need to keep adding on 7s to 6 to try and get some square number so we can take the square root of both sides. So 6, 13, 20, 27, 34, 41. Seems we're going to go on forever again. So let's do as we did before and check the discriminant. So what we're looking for is b squared minus 4ac. Okay, now we're not interested in our square term, we're only interested in our quadratic. And we calculated this last time to be equal to 17. So now what we want to know is, is 17 a quadratic residue of modulus 7? Okay, now 17, we know in mod 7 language, that's going to be congruent to 3. So what we basically need to know is, is 3 a quadratic residue mod 7. Now the quadratic residues of 7 are 0, 1, 2 and 4, of which 3 is not one of them. So therefore we can conclude that this has no solutions modulus 7. So from our modulus 7 calculations, the only solution we've got for our building blocks is this one. So these are our only two building blocks to make our answer. So let's take this off the board and try and make our answer up from these two. Okay, so we've got 1 plus 3n. So that'll be my first building block. I like to letter these, so I'll call that letter A. And my B will just be this one, 5 plus 7n. So I'm going to do the Chinese remainder theorem with these two terms. 
So I do one plus three from this side. I change my variable to K and I see if that's congruent with this value here, which is five. And as this is seven N, I want modulus seven. Okay, so now I just need to solve for K mod seven. So now I've got three K is congruent. Subtract one on both sides. That gives me mod seven. So now I need a number congruent to four modulus seven that will be divisible by three. Well, if I just add four a couple of times, I'll get 11 and then 18. 18 is divisible by three. That's where we want to go. Okay, so now I know my K equals six. So now the second part of this stage of the calculation, I'll go back to my A value, one plus three times something. So I don't plug in my N, here I plug in my K. So now I have six, and then I want my modulus seven, so I'll add seven in. So basically all we're looking for here is to exchange this five for a value K, and then plug that in. And then this will give me my first solution. So one plus three times six, that's gonna give me one plus 18, which is 19, plus seven threes, 21. And 21 N. Okay, so this is my first part of my answer. So this is my infinite solutions. So if N is any integer, 19 plus 21 N, you can plug that in there, and this congruence with work will work. I'll let you have a go at that. And you can plug in the comments below what sort of answers you're getting and if they work or not. But the question asked us to find the least residue solutions. Now the least residue solutions mod 21, we're looking for a number between zero and 20. So therefore our least residue solution is gonna be 19. So our least residue solution equals 19. So this is our final answer for this solution here.